have merited the title the Great, and even fewer women have. St. Gertrude is one of them. She was a virgin, mystic, and Benedictine abbess, and was called by our Lord himself, my chosen Lily. Although nothing much is known of this German woman's family background, it is widely accepted that she was entrusted to the sisters of Helfte Abbey to be educated when she was five years old. It is also possible that she entered the monastery school as an orphan. Mechtilda, the younger sister of the abbess Gertrude, who was later canonized a saint, took care of young Gertrude. Gertrude and Mechtilda had a strong bond that only grew deeper with time, allowing Mechtilda to have a great influence over Gertrude. The high walls surrounding the cloister broadened the young girl's mind instead of confining it. The nuns there were known for their thoroughness in training and study, which only helped the intellectual gifts that God had bestowed on Gertrude. She devoted herself to her studies and received an education in many different subjects. At a very young age, Gertrude was both fluent in Latin and very familiar with scripture and works from the fathers of the church, including Augustine. She also discovered Christ in the monastery and the beauty of living for him and with him in the intimacy of his love. The Benedictine sisters soon realized that she was favored by heaven. One nun who suffered the torment of terrible temptations had a dream in which she was told to ask Gertrude for help and to ask for her prayers. As soon as Gertrude began to pray for her, the temptations ceased. After several years, Gertrude moved from the monastery school to the novitiate, taking the veil and becoming a nun. Gertrude, known for being charming and able to win people over, entered the Benedictine order at Helfte. In 1280, at the age of 24, she went through an inner crisis that lasted several weeks. She felt lonely, lost, and depressed. Her human plans disintegrated. This might have been the end of everything, but instead, it was a new beginning. At the age of 25, Sister Gertrude had a jarring spiritual experience, which would divide her life dramatically into two halves, before and after. Before, Gertrude was a faithful nun, but overly interested in secular writers and knowledge for knowledge's sake. After, she buried her head in scripture, read widely in the Fathers of the Church, and she always felt as if she was being watched by the eyes of Christ. She devoted herself to personal prayer and meditation and began writing spiritual treaties for the benefit of her monastic sisters. Her fame grew. She became one of the great mystics of the 13th century. The monastery was soon filled with people in search of her words, comfort, and guidance. She had great influence because the reputation of her holiness and her visions attracted many people. Since her conversion, she had become the confidant of Jesus, who revealed to her the infinite love of his divine heart and charged her to spread it among human beings with love for the suffering and for sinners. Gertrude's conversations with Jesus prompted her to write pages that would bring souls to him. More than three centuries before the visions of St. Margaret Mary Alacoque in France, St. Gertrude had visions of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. In one vision, St. John the Evangelist placed Gertrude close to Christ's wounded side, where she could feel his pulsating heart. Gertrude asked John why he did not reveal the mystery of Christ's loving heart to mankind. St. John responded that his duty was only to reveal the very person of Christ, Together with her friend and teacher, she practiced a spirituality called nuptial mysticism, 
That is, she came to see herself as the bride of Christ. Gertrude composed her spiritual diaries at the express command of her spouse, Christ. She embraced charity for both rich and poor. Gertrude's health began to deteriorate, but she continued to only show her love for the Lord. By this time, Gertrude's mystical union with her spouse, our Lord Jesus, was so ardent and intimate that even the thought of sudden death could not disturb her. In fact, she expressed her desire to join her spouse. One Good Friday, images of Christ's wounds, stigmata, appeared on Gertrude's body. For a time, these painful marks bled seven times a day. Word of Gertrude's stigmata spread throughout the country, and many arrived to meet her. So many people interrupted her prayerful solitude in order to view the phenomena. Gertrude asked God to do something about it. So the bleeding stopped, but the marks and pain remained with her for the rest of her life. For the next 18 years, Gertrude suffered patiently every day. Throughout her life, Gertrude produced numerous writings, although only a few still exist today. One of her longest surviving works is Legatus Memorialis Abundantiae Divinae Paetatis, the Herald of Divine Love. Her other standing works include her collection of spiritual exercises and Precis Gertrudiane. Gertrudian prayers. Gertrude's life became daily more supernatural, and often she experienced ecstasies in which she not only enjoyed the company of our Lord, but His Holy Mother as well. Even her favorite saints came to visit her. On November 17, 1301, Gertrude passed away a virgin and joined her bridegroom forever. Apart from her writings, few details of Gertrude's life are known. She left virtually no footprint besides her life of quiet fidelity as a contemplative nun. Like John the Baptist, she decreased so the Lord could increase. Eternal Father, I offer the most precious blood of thy divine Son, Jesus, in union with the masses said throughout the world today for all the holy souls in purgatory, for sinners everywhere, for sinners in the universal church, those within my own home and within my family. Amen.